I'm Kerry Fink, and welcome to today's edition of the Kingdom Living Podcast. I'm Kerry Fink, and together with Glenn Reppel. How are you today, Glenn? I'm doing great. Thank you, Kerry. It's a glorious day. It is wonderful. You know, we're so excited about the impact that Kingdom Living uh, is, is having. Uh, you know, we were so fortunate to be able to go, Glenn, as you know, uh, worldwide, just in the uh, past uh, couple of weeks, uh, we've been uh, sort of uh, making sure our messages were hitting home uh, here where we are in the United States, but uh, so excited to welcome a global audience now to these uh, podcasts and seeing just the, uh, uh, the audience reacting and appreciating uh, just hearing the word of God, Glenn, because that's really all this is, right? <laughs> yeah, in, in, that the, in, in that this is an opinion show, uh, we're generally reading and speaking the word of God. Uh, and so, so it's just, it just spreading that word. So this isn't about uh, carrying Glenn. This is about bringing honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, we know that word does not return void. So we're trying to take uh, the lies uh, that we have believed and really put that fraud fire extinguisher on those lies. You know, and that was the point that I wanted to bring out, you know, so if you're new to this, and, and again, we're welcoming, I literally, literally uh, tens of thousands of new uh, viewers each week to this uh, podcast, and so appreciative that you're taking the time. But for those of you that may not have had the benefit of a background, it's an interesting story, Glenn, because uh, you come from a complete business background, and then you write this book. You, first of all, you've been committed to the Lord all the way through, but I mean, you've done the REPL Minute since, uh, since, the, since the early 2000s, but then a few years ago, God gave you this book, Fraud, What God Has to Say About the Tactics of the Enemy, and it's so unusual that a guy who is an expert in financial and helps people uh, plan with their finances would write such a book, but what you were really referring to was about the original fraud, which is what the enemy, uh, the enemy was up to in the garden all those all that time back. You know, and and Carrie, you know, I, you know, we've said this before, but if fraud was committed against you, would you want to know about it? <laughs> and and it has, and and we we're exposing the fraud that has been. Uh, exposed to mankind and we put this together into 40 little bite-sized uh, chapters that, that we go through and uh, we do this with the kingdom living uh, uh, e each day but then also with these podcasts we, we expanded and into additional teaching so it's it's uh, it has been exciting to see uh, the viewership in increase like you said tens of thousands yeah uh, and, and it's week. just a, it's it's it just shows glenn how hungry the world is to to hear the word of god and to really uh because it it makes such a difference and that's one of the things again if you're new all these resources are available at the repelminute.com all you have to do is go to the repelminute.com there's so many uh tools and resources that you can avail yourself of number one if this fraud series has intrigued you, everything is right there. You can go back and review uh, the different chapters in that book. You can order a copy of the book. If uh, you can get it in English language, Spanish language, you can uh, get it as an ebook if that's a convenient way to work with it. Uh, but it's a great tool. And we've oftentimes talked to people who say, look, I took this book, you know, and maybe I met with, uh, you know, we did a home group uh, Bible study kind of thing, and we kind of went through these 40 bite-sized chapters week by week. And then, Glenn, as you say, once you've read it and appropriated major notes, give the book away. Give it to somebody else who's going to benefit uh, from the teachings in there. But also on the website, you'll find Glenn's daily Monday through Friday uh, morning. It's really like a morning inspirational, motivational Bible study. Uh, in, in just, just in the time it takes you to drink your cup of coffee. It's three or four minutes, and it will set your day up great. It's called the Repl Minute. Glenn, you've been doing that for years, and, and you found it's a great way and helps a lot of people start their day. Yeah, I, I, 
I listened to it and I go, wow, where did that come from? Uh, and, and so I know it wasn't from me, but it's the Holy Spirit just working and speaking through. It's, it's God's word penetrates the heart. And uh, it just, it, it is, it impacts us uh, because it's so easy to get down and, and uh, uh, be fearful. And, and so it's God's word brings hope into our lives. I know, absolutely. And then uh, on top of that, again, if you're new to the series and, and you're, you're uh, enjoying and getting something out of the Kingdom Living, I encourage you to go back and take a look because every single Kingdom li Living episode is archived and you can find them all again at therepleminute.com and just pull them up and enjoy them as you go through the day. But I am so excited uh, about today's topic because this is one that really holds a lot of promise when you think about it. The title, you know, we, we've covered so many titles along the way, Glenn. We've, we've covered everything from uh, 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 victory living. I mean, it just the list just go the list just goes on. Uh, freedom is another popular one that's out here. But today we're going to talk about the promised land, and I'm so excited to to ask you to just dive right into that. What yeah. a great what a great teaching this will be. Yeah, and, and what's interesting is we get and talk about the historical promised land of the Israelites uh, coming out of slavery in Egypt with, with knowing their goal and their mission was to get into the promised land. So three million people had started uh, with Joseph's family uh, in Egypt and grew to three million people. And they came out, but only two of that generation made it to the promised land. So this is a subject we really have to look at and understand. And so, uh, so I, and I it just, I don't know, I just get chills down my spine just even speaking because what happens, why didn't they make it into the promised land? What did they see? What did they see? And, and so it's really important because they, sp they sent the spies into Canaan to look at the promised land, uh, 12 of them, but what did they see? So it's important. What are you seeing uh, that, that, are, that are out there listening to this? So the question here is, uh, our, our list, what we're going to do is put the fraud fire extinguisher on you can't enter the promised land now. So, so the idea is the truth is the promised land is available now. It's not when you get to heaven. It's now. And, and as we have always done in, in starting in these podcasts, we got to bring a biblical foundation to everything that we're talking about. And we like to always start with the idea of what are the three greatest historical events ever? What are the three greatest historical events ever? And as we know, is that we talk about the green line. Uh, this green line is God's intended purpose for mankind. And, and this, this is the kingdom of God. And, and creation is the number one, the first greatest historical event ever. And, and, and God spoke creation in, into exist, existence. And he said, in the beginning, in the beginning, which is time, God, the source, <laughs> created motion, uh, the heavens, uh, which, which is space, and the earth, which is matter. That's science. That's what science uh, talks about, those five different things. So creation, God spoke, so his word is power, spoke creation into existence and made man in, our, in his image and likeness. So, so God is a spirit and we're spirit beings made in his image. But what happened with Adam and Eve, the but comes in here, is, is, a, is what happened, Adam and Eve, uh, they betrayed, they, they, they uh, uh, rebelled against God, and we have what's called the fall, which is the, the second greatest historical event. And, and we have to ask the question, which people ask, when, when did sickness and disease and death start? What well, came in here at the fall with the rebellion of man not trusting God and saying, I'm going to do it my own way, my own selfish way. And so we lost, we lost everything that God had intended in a relationship. We lost our relationship with our father. 
And so what happened is we have the kingdom of darkness, which is the satanic rule of the prince of this world. But we know that the, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So we, we know he had to reestablish this. We'll talk about this. But, but what happens, this tree here that's not bearing fruit, this is what love is not. That love is not angry, rude, envious, prideful, selfish, unforgiving, boastful. And dull. This is what the kingdom of darkness is like because it's not filled with love. It's filled with bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. And so that's what the kingdom of darkness, ruled by the prince of this world. And, and we see the impact and the effects of it with death, sickness, and disease came in. And then the symptoms uh, uh, is the shame and the guilt and the pain and, and condemnation, the inferiority complex, the orphan spirit where we're, we're wanting to know our father. When I'm talking about our, our spiritual forever living father, and, 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 and then we have this rejection and, and injustice and fear. And, and we have that also the judgment because we live with the idea that we're going to be judged. But thanks be to God who loved mankind so much that he redeemed, he redeemed mankind back through, through Jesus Christ. He sent man in the, uh, God in the form of man in a human body to redeem us back to the Father's love. And with that, we become recreated, new creation life. Because, and again, Carrie, as you know, we've been doing this for, for, for quite a while now. And, and I think this is our 40th or 45th po podcast. But, but uh, what happens, we just see all the dots connect from Genesis to Revelation. And, 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 as, and as the viewers see this, and, and that's why this is so foundational to get this green line, red line type of thinking, because, because God in his restoration uh, of mankind restoring us back uh, to his, so it's because we've, we've been trained a lot of times by religion and we, we, we try to work our way to God and, but Jesus came and, and by his love and sacrifice on the cross, he said, it is finished. It's complete. Mankind has been restored back. All that was lost in the fall has been restored back. Now, and that means that we now are rulers here on earth. So he came, heaven came to earth to, to give dominion back, carry to you and I and all mankind. So, because that was the whole intention of the person was bring the kingdom of God to earth, but Adam and Eve uh, lost that for mankind, but Jesus brought it back to us. So we're going to be talking about the promised land, but here we are, is that now we're born again. So we're back to what the Garden of Eden looks like. We get that promised land now. And so we're born again. The spirit comes back alive inside of us. And now we're at that green line with eternity where you have, we have a, we have a spirit. We have a, we're spirit beings made in the image and likeness of God. That same spirit is living inside of us. We have a soul housed inside of a body and our soul is our mind, our will and our emotions. And the tendency is for our flesh uh, uh, which, which is our, our, our senses, our five senses, where we see, smell, uh, uh, taste, and hear, uh, and touch. Th those drive a lot of us, and that, and, and that was ruling over us in the kingdom of darkness. So what happens, our spirit being is the same spirit that Jesus Christ has, that God has, that lives inside of this temple. And so we're born, when we become born again, that comes alive. Yet what happens and that love, that love of God, which is, is, is the image of God, comes alive for us. And then the real important thing, because the spirit comes in, but it's not until we really get the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So the kingdom of God entered in, and that's when the Holy Spirit, so it's really when we begin. That's why I like this line going up, because God wants to give us all that he has for us. And so it's asking and it's being baptized in the Holy Spirit and receiving and growing. And we begin having the power over the darkness. My commander in chief, Jesus Christ, 
has defeated the commander in chief, Satan. And now I am in charge. And, and so I'm a ruler over my flesh. And I know that Satan has been defeated. He's there, but he's been defeated. And we rule over him because of what Jesus Christ did. He defeated Satan. And, and the resurrected Christ is the receipt. The payment was paid and we have the receipt and we're sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ and we have victory with us now. And, and it's the Holy Spirit that reveals that to us through, through the word of God. And that's why then we have this kind of tree living inside of us. So the roots of this tree is the root of love. Love is patient, kind, truthful, trust, protects, hope and perseveres. And then we have the fruit of the spirit growing out of this, which is divine love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now here's something that, that I think is just so neat. I, I kind of said this as we opened up here, but the very first verse in the Bible is, 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 is in Genesis. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, so what happens, this just ties, uh, science gets to, to, to tie into what the word of God is saying because science deals with these five things, time, source, motion, space, and matter. So, so in the beginning, time, time was created, time. So that was the beginning and we have the source. So what is the source? It's God, the, the, it's God, he is the source. And we have motion because he spoke into this and it created. So we have the emotion and, 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 and created the heavens, which is space. And then we have matter, which is earth. And so the matter is also, we have the body uh, that, is, that is matter also. And so uh, uh, this is exciting. So what we're doing here today, and, and this is really, I, I just love this teaching. Uh, I, I think it's really important that we understand uh, uh, what, what, what really the promised land is. And again, don't forget the Old Testament is, is a shadow of what the New Testament is. In, in the new covenant is. We have the old covenant, we have the new covenant, and, and the Holy Spirit reveals these things too. So, so this is just a reflection of really the interest of enter, in, entering into the promised rest. So Egypt, so, so the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt for, for about 400 years. And so Egypt, uh, and, and, and so, so uh, Moses goes to the Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And so, so, so the whole idea, and they got, they had the 10 plagues, they had the parting of the Red Sea. And so, so the Israelites entered into the wilderness. So, so when, when the, when the Israelites left Egypt by the blood of the lamb over their doorposts, that blood was shed. So we see is that's a representation of redemption. They were redeemed out of the slavery and the bondage that they had being in prison, basically in slavery in Egypt. So they came out by the Passover blood uh, of, of the lamb through grace and faith and, and, the, and salvation happened. They were saved and they were healed. They're totally, there was no feeble one. They all came out healed. They were restored by God's grace, mercy, and love. So that's salvation. So what we're talking about, where we're going here with the promised land is that green line escalating up here. Because where we're going to is this, the promises receiving all that God has for us. So, so where'd they go? They went into the wilderness. And so they wandered around in the wilderness where they're supposed to be going straight into the promised land. So three million came out of the wilderness. And so the wilderness here is a place for sanctification and obedience. It's a place that, that, that we're, the whole intent here, you come out of Egypt, but you go through the wilderness. We go through the wilderness by grace and faith. And, so, and, and again, as, as Moses said to the Pharaoh, so we can go worship. And what's happened is in the desert, you have a choice. Are you going to worship things? Or are you going to worship God? And, and we'll see it in the scripture in a second, is that, is that 
uh, about what is the purpose of the wilderness is to test and see, Carrie, what's really, what's really inside of our heart. Will we follow the commands that Adam and Eve didn't follow, which is, is, is to trust God with all of our heart. And will we be found faithful? And, and in the desert, we can be self-focused or we can be Christ-focused. We can be looking at the Messiah. So the, the, the wilderness is the place that really shapes and molds us. We've been saved, but we may die in the desert. So three million came out of Egypt, but only two of that generation made it into the promised land. And see, that statistic, so, so th they had funerals almost every day for people dying, uh, so death was there. And so what happens, we have escaped the judgment of death through the blood of Jesus Christ. So the key here of going through the wilderness is entering into and receiving all the Holy Spirit has for us by grace by grace through faith. And it's entering into that rest and that's trusting God. That's entering in from the, from the self-effort and from the law, because, because what happens when we get saved, there's a tendency, I know in my own life, the tendency was uh, to be religious, you know, and, and, and it's, it's doing good. It's kind of the, 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 the Santa Claus type of, of thinking and philosophy. Uh, if, if you do good, you get good. You know, if you do bad, you get bad. And so, so, so that, that was a part of that type of, type of thinking. And so, so what we do is we enter into God's rest from the self-effort and from the law. And really what we, and we're going to be talking about is, is, is receiving the shalom peace. And we're going to, we're going to be talking more about what that really means. We enter in to rest. And that's the completeness of the salvation where the soul is at, at rest. So as the soul receives salvation, we're going to enter into that rest and his presence becomes so real because that Holy Spirit is dwelling in us and active. So we're being ruled now by the Holy Spirit and not the flesh. And so what we have then is the tree of life, the living water living inside of us, and, and, and now the battle is the Lord's. We have victory in the Lord. And, and then what we see is we have the knowledge of the righteous, of righteousness, that we have been made righteous and all sin has been forgiven, past, present, and future. So let's, let's look at this. So here's, here's what the scriptures say. And, and, and this, this is, and is, is, is in Deuteronomy, and in, 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 in Deuteronomy 8, 2, 3, the question here, what is the purpose of the wilderness? What's the purpose of the wilderness? And, and, and it says, and you shall remember always, always, all the ways of the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Now, again, Moses knew the way of God, and the Israelites saw the acts but it's knowing the ways of God. Moses trusted God. Caleb and Joshua that entered into the promised land, they knew the ways and trusted God and believed and was committed to his ways. So a lot of times we see, but we're not really committing to it. So, so all the ways which the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. Why? So that, so that, here's the so that, so you might humble you and test you to know what's really, what's really inside of your heart. What's really going on inside that soul? Are you really trusting me? So that that inside the wilderness there, this is a sanctify, sanctification process of purifying our mind and, and our emotions and our will to align up with the spirit that's living inside of us. Whether you would keep his commandments. Are you going to trust what he says? When you say to your children or grand, get out of the street, it's there to protect you. And so are we going to follow his, his ways of life, which, which, which brings life and contentment and peace, the shalom peace or not? So, so he humbled you and allowed you to be, to be hungry, but look what he did. He fed you with manna. 
a substance which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, so that he might make you understand by personal experience that man does not live by bread alone. So, so man doesn't live by, by the pure substance of eating bread, but man lives by what? Every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So that's why I like this picture here too, is God breathing on the word of God. And you see the radiance of this young girl's uh, face just lighting up. So that's that's what the word of God does. And, and we talked about in the last podcast was it's a double-edged sword. The word of God is a double-edged sword, meaning it's the word of God coming out of his mouth into our mouth and into our soul and then speaking out. So, so his word comes in and it comes out of our mouth also. So that's that double-edged sword. So we don't live by bread alone. So what this piece that God gives us is a shalom peace. So let's look what this piece is. And, and uh, this is in John 14, 27. Uh, I'm leaving you a gift, the gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift. And again, I, I use the word red here, the red coloring to show that that's the red line. Uh, and the, the gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And again, so part of the question we ask is, why didn't more people enter in to the promised land and trust God to enter in? To, and we're going to look at some, what the promised land looks like here. But what the world's definition of peace is a financial peace. Uh, it's a financial peace. And it's a peace that's seeking the pleasures of life. And so this holds us back from receiving all that God has. Now, God wants us to enjoy the, his creation, but it's not to be worshiping his creation. So the world offers financial peace in, in this, and it seeks the pleasures of life. And what we see is the pleasures of life. We see we're under the law uh, of, of do good, be good, do good. And, and we have this hard work. Uh, the sweat of the brow, we have a self-effort, we have more is always better, he that has more is always better, we have this competitive nature, we have this scarcity and lack type of mentality, because we want more, and then we have fear and worry that comes in, and we see sickness and disease, and what is, what's the emotion that comes out of this? It's the stress and anxiety that, that just flows through uh, the world's peace, uh, there's no contentment in this. But what we see is we have the shalom peace that's entering into the promised land that God has in Christ Jesus. Uh, it's the grace of God in Christ Jesus. And what we see, and this is what shalom peace is, it's wholeness, it's health, it's peace, it's welfare, it's safety, it's soundness, it's tranquility, it's prosperity, it's perfectedness. It's, it's fullness, it's rest, it's entering into his rest, it's harmony, and it's the absence, it's the absence of agitation or discord. And so it's like being on the ark in, in that while, while Noah, and again, there's another situation where the flood wiped out all of civilization, but for one family. And they were enclosed into the ark. So we have that ark. We have that ark. Uh, we, we have the ark of the covenant living inside us through our, the temple, the body. And, and, and with that, we're protected. We have this protection now as, as all the disturbance and trip, uh, 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 everything's going on in the world. We have the safety of knowing that, that the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. And, the, and there's another way of taking the same scripture, John 14, 27. And, and I like this version here. It says, the peace I leave, uh, I, I leave with you, my own peace, I now give and bequeath to you. He's giving it. So we have to receive the gift. We have to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we have to ask for it. We ask for it. And he wants to, our Father wants to give it to us. Not Now, this peace is not as the world gives, uh, do I give to you? Do not let your heart. So it's really, see, again, that heart is our mind, will, our soul. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. 
Don't let it be. So, so fear holds us back from trusting all that God has. Stop. Now, this is me. Stop allowing yourself to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Boy, that, that's a pretty strong command. Yet that, that's speaking right to our soul. And again, uh, what we see here is the wholeness, the health, the peace, the welfare, safety. And, and this is actually the same definition of salvation. This is what we receive as salvation. So as we enter into the promised land, uh, we, had, we got salvation saved out of Egypt, uh, but we have to go through the sanctification process of, of becoming holy as, as he is holy and experience the Holy Spirit working and great. And that's that, and, and the empowerment that we have through the, 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 the baptism of the Holy Spirit and taking authority over the earth rather than the flesh and the enemy ruling us. Now our commander in chief, Jesus Christ, has defeated the command, your commander, uh, the, Satan. And, and now I'm in charge. I'm in charge here and I can rule over my soul. Uh, the spirit rules over the soul instead of the flesh, those selfish desires that we've got. So uh, what happens is, is that we, we have good news. We have the law or grace. And what we, we can do, and, and again, this is kind of like the old covenant versus the new covenant, because we've entered into this new covenant. We can be sin conscious, or we can be righteousness conscious. We can demand conscious, or we can be supply. God's given us all the supply. Uh, and again, under the old law uh, of, of being in the wilderness, uh, uh, thou shalt not steal. Now, God's love and grace is giving, it's being generous. And we have this performance way of thinking and self-effort. And here now we're resting in God's promise through the Holy Spirit. Uh, the law was given by Moses, but, but through Jesus Christ, we came to realize his love that he's got for us. Uh, our daily confession in the old covenant is, is the confession of our sin. Now we have the confession of our righteousness who have got in Christ Jesus. And there is therefore no condemnation for those that walk, not according to the law, but by the spirit. So we're being, we're walking in the Holy Spirit. And then we have this, you shall not conditional. We have God's promises, which are unconditional. And he said, I will, I'll deliver you. I'll transform you. I've restored you. You are a son and daughter of God. You're a child of God. I love you. I love you. And so we enter, uh, we earn under the old covenant, we earn God's love. Here we receive God's love. Uh, we, we see the acts, Moses saw the, uh, the excuse me, the, the children of Israel saw the acts of God. Moses saw the ways of God. So we're witnessing the ways of God. The law was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Here we have the tree of life. We enter into his presence. And under the law, it's what you see it's now seen with spiritual eyes and, and seeing. So as the 10, 12 spies went in to, to Canaan and into the promised land and, and spied it out, what did they see? We'll see two groups of people that saw different visions of what they saw. One was filled with fear. We can't do it. And Caleb and Joshua said, oh, yeah, we can because they were trusting God's promises. So one was self-focused. The other is the promised land, Christ focus. One is worshiping the created, the other is worshiping the creator and the redeemer. Uh, and under law and under the old, it does not take the Holy Spirit to reveal the law. Here, to, 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 the Holy Spirit reveals grace through faith. And, and then the old covenant, it's a conditional covenant. Here we have an unconditional. God will never leave us or forsake us. Under the old law, there's condemnation, fear, guilt, shame. And here we have the freedom from the law. Now, you're going to like this, Carrie, because you, you've done such a great job in this. In, 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 uh, in, in our covenant and in, in, in this, uh, here's our promised land uh, benefit package that, that you, you've made an offer uh, f f to the people that are watching and listening because because I think this is so so these are the benefits and this is in the old covenant this is in Psalms 34 that that these this is the benefit package that we have for entering 
into the promised land. He delivers his presence to us. He delivered his presence, his communion, his fellowship with us. He, he's restored us. He delivers his protection and he delivers his provision. Now, I want to put this into perspective so, so we can see it. You know, if you pick up the phone and you order something, a pizza or, or a book, and, and it gets delivered to your, your home, this is a delivery. This is what's being delivered to us. So this is a delivery. This is something God, uh, through Jesus Christ, wants to give us in the Holy Spirit living in us. So here's he delivers us from some things, and he's going to deliver us to some things. The, so now think about this. Do you really want to be delivered from? Do you want to be delivered from all your fears? To be walking and living without fear? Isn't that exciting? Do you want to be delivered from all? all your troubles wow that's a pretty neat we could just stop right there that's a great benefit package and then he delivers he delivers to us the joy he delivers us a radiant face much like that young girl filled in reading the holy spirit as 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 as, as we sense the holy spirit breathing on us we get a radiant face of joy he delivers to us hope our hope is not in this world. Our hope is in the redemption of eternal life we have now. We, we have eternal life now. Uh, and he delivers, now this is good, he delivers us the angels of the Lord who encamp around us, much like Noah in the ark. Uh, they were protected because they were in the ark. We're in the covenant, the covenant of God, in the ark of God is living inside of us. And he delivers us as blessed. We're blessed. He delivers us as saints. He delivers us as children, as sons and, and daughters of God. Look at this. So that we lack, he delivers, so we lack no good thing. We want to get rid of the bad things. So he's delivering us all the good things. He delivers us good life, a long life. You know, because as we get rid of anxiety and the stress and the pressure, that's what many times kills us. The worry and the anxiety of, of seeking after this world rather than pursuing. So, so it's pursuing God and his promises. And these are the promises that he's giving us. And he delivers to us a relationship with the Father. That's his desire. And he makes him so, there's such a happiness when we are praising and celebrating and entering into his presence. He delivers us to us the salvation. He delivers us and makes us righteous. And again, this is so exciting because this is before Jesus came. And so this is David writing this and, and, and perceiving and that, that the future Messiah, we're on the other side of the cross and we still receive this same benefit package because because this is what happened on the cross and so we have full redemption and he delivers us the shalom peace and carrie again i'd suggest that we offer this out of the people want this and yeah. so uh so so in the wilderness going from the wilderness to the promised land what we see is in the wilderness we're, we're really going through the testing to see what's inside of us, the insecurity. Uh, we have insecurity and we've, we have this inadequacy. Uh, we are led generally by the five senses. And, and what we see is we have this, we're led, we're led by the Holy Spirit living and dwelling in us. And we have the sonship knowing I am loved and accepted in the rest. So what we see then too, is we have fear, shame, guilt, regret, lack, no good thing. And, we have the shalom peace, the fruit of the spirit living inside of us. We have this destructive thinking and bondage because 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 what we see is the the Egyptian, the Israelites wanted to go back to Egypt. Uh, they, they said, well, we're going to die out here in the desert. And even though their intended purpose, God's purpose for them was to enter into the promised land, they thought they're going to die in the desert, in the wilderness. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we're entering into the kingdom of God of, of the intended purpose God has had all along. That's that green line living. We, and, and, and in the wilderness, we, we're still sanctifying and cleansing our soul. And so we're expecting these bad things and a bad report. We have this, de, this uh, defeated and heaviness. But when we move into the kingdom of God, into the, into the promised land, we 
we are walking in the favor of the Lord. And, and we have sickness and disease. And as we saw, as they came out, that's, that was gone. And Jesus nailed on the cross sickness and disease. And he said, is it finished? And what we have now is shalom, peace, the health and wellness, the wholeness, the complete, it is finished. That doesn't mean that sickness and disease isn't here. It's just we have to claim the promise of what he said it was, what happened 2,000 years ago. And we receive what he did, and that brings healing to us now. Because we're outside of time, we go back to what he did because Christ is living inside of us. And that's outside of time. We enter into his presence now, which brings a healing. By his stripes on that cross, we are healed now, and that now is going back 2,000 years for what he did. Also, uh, what we seek in, in, generally in the wilderness is the knowledge of man versus the wisdom of God. Uh, we, we, he took the curse on the cross, and now we're blessed and prosperous and successful. We labor to earn to get. We're tired, and we have avidah. We're, 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 we're our work is our worship. As we enter into uh, uh, the promised land, everything we do is sacred because we've, we've divided up uh, the thinking that what we do on Sunday in a building is sacred, yet what we do through our business is secular. No, we're sealed by the blood of Jesus with the Holy Spirit living in us, and we're sacred. We we're the temp we are the walking light with the temple of God in us, and our work, everything we do is redemptive. And we've had a, a podcast going through that. Uh, so here also in the wilderness, we, we do good to get good and do bad to get bad. Uh, but but here we we get good by the grace of God that we don't deserve, and and we don't deserve what Jesus Christ did because we can't earn that. He paid for us, and He gave through the resurrection a receipt that we could show. Hey, I, this receipt says that was paid for on the cross. This is my receipt showing I am healed, and and my commander defeated your commander, and now I am in charge. And my healing is taking place right now through the blood of Jesus. And I have control and command over my flesh. And, and I, have, I, have, I, I have command and control over rejection and hurt and the wounds and the unforgiveness because now I can live and receive the Father's love knowing I'm accepted love and there's unconditional love in me. And we have ownership has lost. Now here, as a steward, we can't lose because because the earth is the Lord's and everything. We're managing all of his, all of his. That's our job is to manage the earth, to bring the kingdom of God here to earth and manage it. And under, in the wilderness, we're fighting to be right. Here, we are made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. And in the wilderness, uh, we want, we're seeking our personal gain more than righteousness. Uh, and we seek to get even and revenge. Whereas in, in the kingdom, we seek righteousness and justice and forgive. For, and we forgive as, as God has forgiven us. We love as he's loved us. And we enter into God's presence. Uh, we're not good enough. That's what we think. We can't do it. We enter boldly into God's presence. And we've talked about this in other podcasts. Uh, because what Jesus Christ did, uh, it's, it's not anything that we've done. And we have a doing type of mentality in the wilderness where uh, over here in uh, the kingdom of God in the promised land, we have a receiving, believing, knowing, and trusting. And that's how we get into the promised land. And we become new creations in Christ Jesus. And so what we find is, is that when we enter into the kingdom of God, what really is stopping us from entering into the kingdom of God? And what we, we, we find here with, with Caleb and Joshua, uh, as, as we read in Numbers, because we find is, is in Numbers 13 and 14 uh, is where the spies were released to go out and look at, and, and go into Canaan and the promised land and find out what, 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 what they see. So here's the report that came back. 
Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses. This is the whole, the whole group and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But here comes the report from the 10 that were filled with fear, doubt, rebellion, and the lack of faith in God. Uh, so, but the men who had gone up and, and uh, with him said, we can't, we can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. Okay, so they, they weren't trusting God. And they spread among the Israelites a bad gossip report about what? About God about the land they had explored. They said the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there were of great size. We saw the Nephilims. Their, their, their descendants of Anak uh, come from the Nephilims. And, and, and look at this. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. So what are we seeing? And we look the same to them. So their view was, was, was not one of the way God sees us. He sees us through the blood of Jesus. They were seeing themselves at, with, with their own flesh. They're not seen through the spiritual eyes. So what we see here then is what stops us from really going into the promised land. And, and again, this is in Numbers 14, 1 through 4. That night, all the people of the community raised their voices and wept out loud. All the Israelites grumbled against what? Against their leader, Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said, they actually wanted to stone them. If only, if only we died in Egypt or in the desert, why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back into slavery into Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. So they wanted to get rid of Moses and Aaron. So here's what happens. Fear and lack of trust in God's provision stops us from really entering into the promised rest. So here's what that was saying, is go back to Egypt so that we, we want to go back and we, we don't want to get out of slavery. We're so used to being familiar with our old way of thinking that we're so content with that. That's the way it'll always be. And, and so we want to go back to the desert, the desert. So we're whining and complaining. And so that's that negative thinking. And that we're going to die by the sword. So that's the fear of death. But we've been set free from death because we've been born again in the spirit. And that wives and children taken as plunder. So you have the fear of others also. And then choose another leader. So we're going to blame others for our own inadequacy of, of, of not trusting God. And so let's look at what it looks like to enter into the promised land. So then Moses and Aaron fell face down after hearing all that fell face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephthah, uh, who were among those who had explored the land, tore their clothes, tore their clothes and said and said, to the entire Israelite assembly. The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. Our God is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, into the promise. We can trust him. A land flowing with milk and honey. It's prosperous. There's business going on here. There's no lack. And, and he'll give it to us. Only, look at this, only do not rebel. And again, what did Adam and Eve do? They rebelled against God. They didn't trust God. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not walk in fear. Be afraid of the people of the land. Because again, our commander has defeated your commander. I'm now in charge. Jesus Christ defeated the enemy, Satan, and now Joshua and Caleb said, we're in charge. We know our God is greater than any enemy that's out there. So, and do not be afraid of the people of the land because he will swallow them up. Look at that. 
Our commander is going to swallow them. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is what? Is with us. So do not be afraid of them. God's perfect love gets rid of fear. So here's how we enter in. And this is some, some of the things we see. Trusting in God's provisions. The land is exceeding. That's that positive thinking. That's, that's trusting and listening to the Holy Spirit. It's listening to the truth instead of the fraud and the lies that the enemy is just throwing at us. Uh, if the Lord is pleased, we trust God. He is pleased when we trust the Holy Spirit living in us and are guided by the Holy Spirit. The Lord will swallow them up if we're not afraid. So it's getting rid of that fear and, and trusting God's love that he loves us and accepts us. Uh, the Lord is with us. That's the confidence in God and there's no fear. So when that fear enters in, the truth leaves us and that sound mind leaves us. And so this is what Caleb and Joshua, and this is, this is just so, so exciting. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as sure as I live, and surely as the glory of the Lord fills the, the whole earth, not one of them who saw the glory. Now, this is me. Not one of them who saw the glory and the miraculous signs that performed in Egypt. Remember, he, he did the 10 plagues. They parted the Red Sea. Not one of them. Now, that, that signs of in, in the desert, but who disobeyed me and tested me 10 times. Not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their forefathers. Not one, no one, no one who has treated me with contempt, with that rebellious spirit, will ever see the land. So if we're walking in contempt and not trusting our daddy, uh, who's, who's the creator and gave us everything, we're not going to enter into that promised rest. But because my servant Caleb has a different spirit and follows me wholeheartedly, I'll bring him into the land. He went, he went to, and his descendants will inherit it also. So it's just like Noah. Noah looked foolish building an ark in the desert when they didn't even know what rain was. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Caleb here went against all the people. Caleb and Josh went against all of, of, of the Israelites and against the 10 spies. But look at this. And Carrie, the question we want to ask to look, what spirit did Caleb had? He had a different spirit. His spirit was the Holy Spirit and is guided and trusting God. And that's the revelation knowledge that we get and trust. And with that, our family and others follow. Now, again, three million died. Three million died, but two entered in. So the question is, are we going to be trusting God with all of our heart to enter into the promised rest? That's the promised rest he's promised us. And we just trust him as we enter in, receive all that he has for us. So good, Glenn. You know, uh, I was thinking, and I was, as you were teaching on this lesson, I was looking back through uh, the promised land um, where, where the chapter is, chapter 35 in your book, Fraud, What God Has to Say About the Enemy. And there was this line in here that just really stands out. And it's, it's like the synopsis or the simplification of the whole thing. You have the enemy the whole time trying to talk to you and tell you uh, that you are a grasshopper and that's all there is to it. And, and then when we buy that, that limits us. It, it becomes that red line living yeah. uh, that you're talking about. Yeah. And yet when we see it from the perspective of God, we're an overcomer. In fact, this one line you said, after you explain, the, you, you give the context of it, but then you say, you are not a grasshopper you are a child of God. And that really sums it up. It's how we see ourselves, Glenn. And I think that's one of the reasons why that believer's uh, uh, declaration is so important. And, and we want to make that offer available. Uh, so you'll see a link where you can just click through and, and get that. Get, it's a PDF and you can just uh, print it out. And it makes a great thing to just set next to you on your desk as you go through the day, just to help remind you 
of the promises of God and the things that are there for you and helps you reject those advances of and attacks of the enemy trying to tell you uh, lies that are just simply not the case, Glenn. Yeah, amen. And are we going to have the spirit of Joshua and Caleb and a Noah? Yeah. And again, this is before the Messiah came and redeemed us. So they were trusting in the future, the prophetic future of the Messiah. We're on the other side now, and we've seen, and we have the witness of what has actually happened, and to see that, and to have the Holy Spirit dwell inside of us. So, yeah, the, and again, that benefit package is so, so important that we get that, that, that promised land benefit package, and it frees us. We get that peace that passes all understanding that the world they're not going to grasp it because they're out there being frustrated and worry and, and anxiety just filled with fear and so god through jesus christ and receive all the love that he's got for us it just sets us free there's such a freedom and liberty that we have in christ it we're not based upon this government we have the government of god living inside of us that is defeated <laughs> all the other principalities and power of darkness. So we have the light of God living in us. That's great. I just love it. You are not a grasshopper. You are a child of God. And in a moment, Glenn, I'm going to ask you to pray for everybody that's listening and participating in Kingdom Living. But but just before we, we do that, I just want to kind of close with this thought that I think what what uh, is so important about the message of kingdom living is because everything that if you go back chapter by chapter of each one of these podcasts, you'll see this pattern building to what Glenn is talking about today, that kingdom living is designed to help you adjust how you're seeing yourself and your relationship with the Lord. So this isn't exactly about how many times you go into a church building or all those kind of things, Glenn, like you, you alluded to before about that spirit of, of just religiousness where, you know, it's performance-based, but it is accepting where God has already placed you on that green line and understanding that it's not through anything that I do or Glenn does or you do. It is through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross that it's just there, but we still have to receive it and make it part of how we see ourselves and that's why almost like the, so, so like the tagline that Glenn, I think you use this in your business, but we, what we've also talked about it in terms of kingdom living, everything we're doing here is designed to help you reach your purpose, how God created you, Glenn. And he knew that purpose and he put us and wrote that in the book of life before he, he founded the earth and before we were formed in our mother's womb, he put that purpose and plan into that book and yeah. so as we reach and seek that purpose but again that seeking him versus ourself and our own self gratification so what happens what stops us from really receiving all he has for us is is we think that we're grasshoppers we're not worthy because of the shame and the guilt of the past we've been redeemed from that we are uh, we are sons and daughters and children with with a father that just loves us and just yeah. wants to embrace us we are we, we you are a child of god that's a great line from the book fraud and remember if you're um please share this message with those that you know and care about and help them understand that this is the way god created them to be as well you can get all of these materials, all these resources. Everything is absolutely free and available at therepleminute.com. Everything from this episode that you're watching right now, in case you want to share it out to somebody uh, of the Repl Minute in this particular episode titled Promise Land. But there are so many great titles that you may want to take advantage of. They're all there. They're all archived. They're all available for you on demand at therepleminute.com. Glenn, we were talking earlier about that you've been publishing this daily uh, biblical motivation piece every every day, every weekday uh, since the early 2000s. And you can get that uh, right on that website, or you can even sign up and they'll put them right into your uh, email inbox. So as you're grabbing that 
uh, morning wake up moment and and seeking the Lord, you'll have some some great word to go with your wake up. And then, uh, like we talked about, even if you want to really become uh, aware of that fraud that uh, the enemy uh, tried to to create, uh, it will help you uh, to just study that fraud series. All of those resources are available, and everything is just uh, free of charge at thereppleminute.com. And so with that, Glenn, I, you know, if we can, I would like to ask if you can pray over everybody within the sound and, and sight of this message today that they can understand you are not a grasshopper, you are a child of God. Yeah, yeah, and that's so good. And just kind of as a closing remark there too, as Kerry was talking, is, is as you're having that cup of coffee for that breakfast, and it's so important that we have a hunger for food, but our hunger for the word of God is much, much, much more important. And, and to really have that hunger, because as that hunger, much like the picture of that young lady with, with God just breathing his breath of life on the word of God, when you receive that revelation knowledge, you don't want to stop it. You want to keep it. And, and just as a deer pants after water, so my soul longs for the water, the refreshment to my soul and the food. And so, so it is rich, it's good for, it's a delicacy as we receive the revelation of, of, of God's word. So that hunger just builds and you want it more and more and more. And you wake up earlier and earlier and earlier. And what you realize, you don't need to sleep. You're walking in the rest of the promised land. So sleep isn't really as important as being in the word of God and receiving all the Holy Spirit has for us. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak life. We speak life into everybody that is listening uh, to us today. Father, you would bring your healing, your healing of cancer and heart disease and the pain in a hip and in an elbow, in a knee and bring healing that you took on the cross that that pain gets out, high blood pressure, you don't belong in that body. Get out now. Get now. Our commander, Jesus, has defeated, has defeated high blood pressure, cancer, and heart disease. And we are in control now here on earth as sons and children of God. And Father, we just thank you. We just thank you for loving us so much that you would send your son to redeem us and restore us back into the image and likeness and to give us dominion and authority here on earth to rule and reign. We are your apostles bringing the message of your kingdom, of your love, to this world. We just thank you. We thank you for your word. Thank you that it does not return void. We just praise your holy name in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Glenn. And thank you, viewer, for taking the time to be part of today's kingdom living message. And again, share this with your friends. You can find us at therepleminute.com. You can find us on the Repel Minute, which is the YouTube channel. And you can find us at the Repel Minute, which is the Facebook page. And please like, share, and just help get these materials in front of the, your friends, your family, your colleagues, and the people that you care about. And let's enjoy kingdom living together. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you, Glenn. God bless you. Thanks.